Greetings students, this is Dr. Norwood. I apologize that I cannot be in lab today, but if I can't be there myself, the next best thing is a video. So this is a video I put together showing you what I would have done if I was going to be in lab anyway. First, to make sure we're, we're all starting at the same place, let's make sure that everybody has turned to page 36 and 37 of the workbook. And it should say Lab 2 at the upper left corner of 36. And this is the second lab. Now, the first thing you're going to see every day when you come into the lab is something like this on the board. You're going to see a section where it says Sellers. It's going to give you a marginal cost curve, a fixed cost. It's going to have a section that says Buyers. It's going to tell you the marginal value curve and the fixed cost. It's also going to tell you whether odds or evens fix first. And the very first thing you should do when you come into lab is to record these curves and complete your seller and buyer worksheets just like I'm about to show you. So note here it says marginal cost equals 4 plus 1 times Q and fixed cost is 1. And now I'm going to turn to the worksheet for sellers and fill in what the marginal cost is. Marginal cost curve equals 4 plus 1 times Q. And then the fixed cost we saw was just 1. After you've done that, what you want to do is go ahead and start filling out this table right here. And let's just fill it out first and then I'll show you why we fill it out. What we do is we take each quantity and we fill in the marginal cost. So what we're doing is we're actually calculating what is the marginal cost of each unit using this formula. And we see here that we use 4. You don't have to write this formula every time. Four. You see what I did here? We used the marginal cost curve at this quantity of 1. 4 plus 1 times Q. Q here is 1. Plug that in and we get 5. What that means is that the cost of producing the first unit is $5. And now we go down to quantity 2 and it's the same thing except we're saying 4 plus 1 times 2 equals 6. And so the cost of producing the second unit is $6. And if you notice, each time you go down, the marginal cost increases by 1. So we go 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and just to make sure we are calculating correctly, let's look at the tenth unit. The marginal cost is 4 plus 1 times 10, which should equal 14, yes. And we could keep going, but there comes a point when you can stop and... and this is about it. So what this tells us, the cost to produce in each unit. Now today, I'm going to tell you to only produce three units. What kind of price would you like to get for that? Well, the first unit costs you $5 to produce. Second unit costs you $6 to produce. Third unit costs you $7 to produce. So if you could get a price that's greater than 7 then we could make money on all those units. Now, I'm ignoring fixed costs for now, but you'll see where it comes in later. So generally, what you're going to do is you're going to calculate the marginal cost of each unit. And however many units you try to sell, you always want to get a price higher than your marginal cost. And so that's what this marginal cost is. This is a formula that tells you that the cost of producing the first unit is 5, the second unit is 6, the third unit is 7. And so that tells you the cost of production. Now, this fixed cost... 
that's a cost you pay regardless of how much you produce. We can think of the marginal cost as like the labor and supplies. If you produce more wheat, then you're going to need more fertilizer. That's part of nitrogen. That's part of marginal cost. If you're going to produce another saddle, you need more leather. The leather is part of marginal cost. But if you have a factory in a building and you have a mortgage on that building, you may pay the same mortgage payment regardless of how much production takes place in that building. And that's what a fixed cost is.